take a drink when he says 32-bit float. Don't do that, you'll die. Hello, Brian Miller here, and welcome to Audio for Content Creators, where we help you sound better and level up for all your content creation needs. I am not dead, although I appreciate those of you who have been sending me DMs and emails for the last year plus that I just stopped making videos. I run a consulting firm and it just required my full attention. Uh, we've been hiring and expanding and I had to shift into kind of a leadership CEO role and it's been a lot, but I had to come back. I had to come back here at least for one video because Rode sent me the NT1 studio condenser fifth generation black. I'm trying to read it off the monitor. That's actually the only reason the, the box is sitting here behind me in the video. In any, in any regard, this is Rode's industry standard, famous, classic studio microphone. It's famous largely because of its low noise floor. It has virtually no self noise, which means there's virtually no noise generated by the microphone itself, which means if you are, I feel like I said, which means a whole lot of times. I actually haven't had that much coffee today. In any regard, it has very low self noise, which means if you're in a proper controlled studio environment that is essentially quiet, like this room is, you shouldn't hear any additional noise from the microphone itself. And that's a beautiful thing. But this is an update. We're not here to talk about the fourth generation or the third generation or all the famous generations. We're here to talk about the fifth generation because they added some stuff and we got to talk about the stuff that they added before we talk about the stuff they added here is the chain that i am using to record with the nt1 is going via xlr through the included very very long very pretty red xlr cable uh from uh, road it was in the box and i'm going into my tascam model 12 mixer slash usb interface uh, there is no processing either on the way in or in post. This is completely raw. This is coming right from the microphone into the computer and it's being captured by PreSonus Studio One, which is the DAW, the digital audio workstation that I use to record. So unless otherwise noted, that is the chain. And you might be wondering, hey, you're recording with XLR. I thought the whole point of this thing was that they added USB capabilities and all this fancy stuff. And they did. So let's talk about that right away because the lead messaging on Rhodes Marketing about this microphone is that it has the USB-C connection, which gives you the ability to leverage Rode Connect and all their fancy software and digital mixers and cool things they've been doing the last bunch of years that we've covered in lots of other videos back in the day when I was making two, three videos a week on this channel. And it also gives you the ability to record in 32-bit float. Now, I guarantee you already know what that means because there's no way this is the first video you're watching about this microphone. I know it's not the first video you're watching because Rode sent me this five or six months ago. I don't know, maybe four or five months ago when it was first being released and I've, I've, just, I've just been too busy. You've heard by now what 32-bit float is. I'm sure you watched a review from, I don't know, Bandrew at Podcastage or Curtis Judd or Mike Delgadio at Booth Junkie. You've at least heard somebody explain 32-bit float. The short and skinny is that 32-bit float allows you to capture a massive dynamic range, which means you don't need to worry about setting the input gain while you're recording. I had to go into my settings in my Mac, into my audio slash MIDI settings, make sure the mic was set to 32-bit float, make sure that my recording software, which in my case is PreSonus Studio One, was set to 32-bit float. Not all recording softwares even have this capability. And then make sure that the song file I opened was set to 32-bit float so that everything is 32-bit float all the way, blah, 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 blah. Take a drink when he says 32-bit float. Once you've done all that, you don't have to set the input gain. You can just hit record. You just hit record and the advantage is if you record way too loud and it clips and distorts on the way in, you can just pull the recorded files gain down. You get rid of all of the clipping, all the distortion. <laughs> Well,
Or if you record it too quiet, you can pull it all the way up and you don't introduce any noise. See, what typically happens if you're recording in 24 or 16 bit is if you clip, if you're too hot on the way in, there's nothing you can do. You can use auto repair software to repair it, but it's, you know, it's, it's, okay depending on how expensive the software is that you use you're never going to get that information back or if you record too quiet on the way in you have to pull the gain up a bunch in post you introduce a whole lot of hiss and noise and grossness but not with 32-bit float it captures so much dynamic range that it doesn't matter it's a miracle and this has been the lead messaging in the marketing around this it's what everyone's talking about and I, I don't think it's that interesting. And the reason I don't think it's that interesting, there are very few situations the average content creator will be in that this would be a huge benefit to you. Let's talk about the situations that it would be beneficial. If you're using this microphone for recording a podcast and you're sticking it in front of a guest who is not used to being on a microphone. So they don't know how to modulate their voice. They don't know how to back away. If they're going to get really, really loud, they don't know how to move up into it. If they're going to get quiet, if they're going to get softer. If you have a guest that's unpredictable, this would be a good opportunity to use 32-bit float. If you are recording like a singer-songwriter situation where you're playing guitar and singing at the same time sometimes it can be really hard to set the gain properly like there's a situation there that you could use it in and i'll demo that in a little bit but for the most part this is a studio microphone studio microphones are designed for studio environments and studio environments are controlled and in controlled environments there's no good reason you shouldn't be able to set the input gain at the appropriate level. I would never use this. Now, for the purpose of this review, I did a test, lots of tests with 32-bit float, just for the like, wee kind of like, hey, isn't it cool that we can do this? Uh, I'm going to show you some examples with singer-songwriter, like I just mentioned, guitar and vocals. I'll I'll uh, I'll show you uh, with the microphone on my. Uh, electric guitar cabinet where I was just like shaking the house with a tube amplifier recording the speaker uh, just to show you that you can do I mean you've seen youtubers demo here here's here, here's an example <laughs> So there you go. You can do the thing as advertised, and it's cool. It's very cool. There's a bunch of reasons I wouldn't use it, and let's talk about them. Uh, the first reason I wouldn't use it is despite the fact that they've given us a crazy long USB cable, I find using USB to plug in a microphone in a studio environment very, very obnoxious. There's only so long they can make these before they start to degrade the 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 quality of the audio it stretched just getting from just getting the mic positioned. oh gosh how do I, just getting the mic positioned in front of my amplifier right on the speaker cabinet and running this all the way back to my computer which is right here it was completely stretched that was as far as it could go and it was just me in this room but if there were me and a couple of other people in this room that would have been a tripping hazard it would have easily gotten ripped out of something or tipped it's just that's no good. But that's not the main reason that I wouldn't use the 32-bit um, float. The main reason I wouldn't use it, it's not because of the audio quality. As far as I can tell, the audio coming directly via USB-C versus the XLR, it, I mean, the XLR is a little bit cleaner, a little bit warmer, but, like, it's, it's, it's pretty imperceptible. I wouldn't worry about that. The thing that I'm concerned about is that with the USB-C connection, it's very difficult to monitor your own voice or to monitor whatever it is that you're recording. In other words, when you're recording, like I am right now, typically we love to have low or no latency recording or uh, monitoring rather, low or no latency monitoring. And what I mean by that is right now I can hear my voice in my ears, in my headphones, in real time as I'm talking. I can hear what I sound like in real time. And that is very important. It's very important because if you don't do that, if I don't have these headphones on, if I can't, or if I have headphones on, but I can only hear the computer and I can't hear my own mic, right now, I can hear what I sound like to me 
What, but what I sound like to me is not what you're going to hear. What you're going to hear is what the mic sounds like. In other words, what the microphone hears is much more important than what my ears hear like by themselves in the real world. So if I want to know what you're going to hear, if I want to have a better representation of that, then I need to be able to hear my voice as I'm talking in my own headphones. Now, this may sound, well, yeah, obviously, like we all know this. We all know how to do this. Well, here's the thing. With an XLR cable connection like I'm doing right now, it's really easy. You run your XLR into a mixer or an audio interface or one like I have that's both, and you take the monitor mix directly from the mixer or the interface back into your headphones. M almost every audio interface today, if not all of them today, in 2023, have a low or no latency headphone mix. You can just hear it. It's just right there. It's built in. You can hear it directly. It's perfect. Here's a problem with USB. If you go USB from the microphone into the computer and you want to hear yourself, it has to go into the computer and then you have to send it from the computer back to your headphones. And that round trip creates latency or a delay. It just There's a physical amount of time it takes to get the signal from the microphone via the USB cable into the computer, from the computer back through the USB cable back into or through whatever um, you know cable you have that's coming back to your headphones. That round trip latency causes a delay, which means you you if you try to do this, you hear your voice a little bit after you're talking, which, which makes, makes it, it almost, almost impossible, impossible to, focus. to focus. It's really, it's really hard, hard to talk, to talk when, you're when you're hearing a delay of what you're saying, saying coming, coming like, like slapping, slapping back, back to you. you. So USB microphone manufacturers, they solve this problem by putting a headphone jack in the microphone. Almost every USB microphone has a headphone jack built into it somewhere that you plug into. And essentially what they've done in that case is they've turned the microphone into an audio interface. They've made the microphone a digital interface. And so what you're getting is the effect of having a mixer or an interface by plugging your headphones directly in. So you plug your headphones into the, to the microphone. You hear your voice come straight back to you with basically no latency, imperceptible. While you can also hear the audio coming from the computer because it, the computer is using the microphone as an interface to send audio back to you. That is the standard approach and it works fine. It's usually pretty low quality. The headphone driver inside of the average USB mic is not very good, but it works fine. It's a reasonable solution. Rode has opted to not include a headphone jack in this microphone. In other words, despite the fact that their marketing is so focused on the USB connection and all of the cool stuff you get to do with the Rode Connect and the mixer software and all this cool stuff, 32-bit float, it feels like the USB was an afterthought because if it was actually built in to the product design from the get-go, they would have included a headphone jack. I meant to point not to do this. That was inappropriate. They would have included a headphone jack. So if you're going to use this microphone via USB-C in order to take advantage of either Rode's software or to take advantage of their, you know, US, uh, the 32-bit flow capability, then you're going to need to create a monitor mix from your computer and send it back to your headphones, which creates that slap back delay, even in the best of circumstances. And when I was trying to sing earlier during a take I did where I recorded acoustic guitar on one take, and then on another take, I recorded the vocals listening to the guitar I'd already recorded because I had my headphones on. I was listening to the guitar I'd already recorded and I needed to hear my vocals mix it right i needed to hear the monitoring of my vocals in my headphones there was that slapback delay which made it very hard to sing and i tried seven or eight takes of a song i've sung a billion times and found it very difficult to get a good take you will love me the way well, i know i can be colorful my timing wasn't quite on it was just a clunky experience and for that, for that, I would never use the USB-C functionality in this microphone. Your mileage may vary, but that is the first half of this review, probably 80% of this review. I needed to talk about that first. And now 
we can spend just a little bit of time talking about how great the microphone sounds, uh, which, you know, we don't need to spend too much time on because we all know it's a great sounding microphone. It's a studio staple. It's famous. And uh, sounds great. It does what it exactly what you would expect for whatever it is, 250 bucks or whatever. It punches way above its weight class. That's why it's so famous. It's a very affordable, very reasonably priced microphone. That's at least the quality of microphones two or three times its price, if not more. The complete lack of any internal noise that's perceptible is amazing. The tone of this microphone, while not neutral, is very close to neutral. I would use this. In fact, I will use this to record my audiobook uh, for my next book and probably record the audiobook for my first book uh, that I never did. Here's a bunch of audio samples of me using it in different situations. I certainly wasn't expecting a stranger to utter four words in the last seat of an airplane that would completely change the course of my life. I knew that wasn't possible. But she did. A connection was formed and a powerful relationship was born within what I believed were impossible conditions. In retrospect, that moment can only be described as pure magic. Show is over, close the storybook. There will be no encore. And all the random hands that I have shook, well then, reaching for the door. I watch their backs as they leave single file. You stood stubborn, cheering all the while I know I can be colorful I know I can be gray I know this loser's living fortunate Cause I know you will love me Well, I know I can be gray. Well, I know this loser's living fortunate. Cause I know you will love me the way. It comes with the shock mount, which is very, very nice. Very nice shock mount. And the attached windscreen and uh which is nice but because it's attached if you don't want to use it it's a little clunky to get out of the way kind of kind of just hangs here uh but let's let's do some let's do the uh the plosives test peter piper picked a peck of pickled peppers okay completely useless without it 
can't do that. That's why I'm talking past it at 45 degrees to you. Uh, but if you were talking right into it, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. No good. Don't do that. There we go. Let's set this up maybe three inches away from it. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Okay, that's great. So there you go. This is what it would sound like if you were just doing a narrative talking head or audio book or podcast and you weren't worried about the visuals because obviously you are going to lose your face unless you are at a completely different angle, unless the camera is coming to you from a different angle. You're going to lose your face if you're using the pop filter. Okay, what's the verdict? Should you buy this? Should you not? <laughs> it's a great microphone. It's a great microphone. It sounds great. And if you desperately need the 32-bit float, 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 the 32-bit float function, if you desperately need that, you got to get it. Just make sure you actually need that in a studio environment. Because if you're planning to use this microphone in a non-studio environment, a non-controlled environment, I think you should hesitate. I'm not convinced that anybody should be using this in an environment that is not controlled. I could use this microphone in this room, but it's so sensitive. The mic is so sensitive that if you're not in a studio environment, I wouldn't recommend it. If you're if you're not in a controlled environment, you you don't get to take it you don't even get to take advantage of the fact that it's got like no self noise because if there's stuff going on in the environment, it's going to be way louder than the self noise ever would be and it's just not going to matter. So I guess what I'm saying is I don't know who this microphone is for really. I feel like most content creators would be better served buying a used previous generation even a new previous generation for a little bit less money. I don't know what that looks like these days um, that doesn't have the USB-C. If you actually desperately need the 32-bit float or you want to take advantage of Rode's you know, software that uh, integrates with all of their products these days, which is very cool, all of their USB-based products, uh, then great, do it. But I think that's where I come down. It's awesome. I love it, and I will use it but I wouldn't buy it. I have it because Rhodes sent it to me for a review and I will use it and I will love it. But if I were gonna go, if they said, hey, send it back, unless you wanna buy it, I would send it back. And then I would buy a previous generation for a little bit less money that doesn't have the USB-C functionality. That is my review. It's uh, good to be back. I, this will not be a regular occurrence, uh, but if you would like to follow with what's been going on with me and my work professionally and otherwise, uh, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, there's a link in the description to that. You can see what I'm up to, uh, what I actually do all day for my day job, which for some reason, I, I guess many of you have not realized because you've reached out to me over the last year. Many of you did not realize that audio, music, this is not my day job. This is just a little passion project I do on the side. And when I don't have time for it, I just I just don't do it. So also, I now have a, a toddler who's about to turn three. So life has been very crazy the last few years. Anyway, thank you so much for your support for all of these years. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already, even though I'm not going to be uploading anytime soon. So maybe don't subscribe. I don't know. Anyway, have a great day. Good to see you again.